Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the final match for today. It's going to be Sizedrum versus Orphilius, and I am Shadow Fury 33, your host. We are on Bandit Plains, which I just realized had a very pretty sun. I mean, look, it's the nice, pretty golden hour orange sun. I actually never noticed this before, surprisingly enough. I feel a little bit silly, but that's what the case is. There is a nice orange sunset. Anyway, let's watch the battle in the sunset between Orphilius and Sizedrum. We just saw Orphilius play. Just now versus Clone. Very interesting match. Jack Rush versus Scalpel basically counter. Although, honestly, it was a really tight match. I wasn't sure who was going to win until it ended. Well, okay, not entirely true. I mean, it was a little bit clear after a little while, but, you know. At least at the beginning, I wasn't sure who was going to win. Sizedrum going for for the Shieldbot Factory. Orphelia is going for Clokybot, which you don't see a whole lot. Now, Bandit Plains is a very large map, but due to the hilly nature of it, tends to favor Raider play. It's one of those maps that... It's large, but it doesn't play it. It plays kind of like a large map in that you do get a lot of economy to work with. But it... It's not... I don't know. It's a bit different. It should, in theory, be a very defensive map just due to the way it's built up. It occasionally works out that way, but... Yeah, there are defenses set up, but the thing is, you have to expand a lot. Now, large maps do often have a raider game, like a really long raider game. Bandit planes just... Despite its size, plays kind of in between. The Raider game will last a decent amount of time, but will continue to harass around the sides. You don't get, say, the Common Catcher style where there's a single front line and that's it. The main base usually doesn't get hit as hard, but then the side bases, as they get constructed, the Raiders can still come in and deal with that. So Raiders are still useful, but not primary. It's not that you have a Raider phase and then you have a Consolidation phase. The Raiders kind of work throughout, though we will see fewer Raiders later on. Anyway... Orphilius is, well, got a couple of glaze going out just to see what's going on. Sizedrum, however, three bandits going down, being considerably more aggressive. Although Orphilius, interestingly, starting in the southeast side, not the south center. Normally, you'll see people start in the south center, or occasionally they're being super aggressive, start right in this little alleyway. Sizedrum starting in a bit more typical south center, but, well, the more aggressive south center, slightly more aggressive. Orphilius, this is a very defensive position. Orphilius wants to make sure they can hold. And then expanding over to the center. A little bit tricky if they want to get over to the actual southwest. Take the entire south side. But it's more defensive. So they're a bit worried about Sizedrum hitting them hard. This might be why they're doing it this way. And Tick... Oh, Tick Glaive from the start. Interesting. A couple Ticks being built up, actually. I'm not sure if they expect Sizedrum to go... Oh, they don't... Oh, no, they know. They know. They've seen Sizedrum's factory. They know that Sizedrum is going for... Oops. Or I think they should. They should know Sizedrum is going for shield bots. And then again, Shieldbot Bandit, that does actually beat Glaives in a straight-up fight. So I can't say that's a bad idea. Just get rid of the Bandits right away, and that, that'll that work very clean. Got rid of the two of them. I think that's... Is that cost-effective? Like 120 to... I think that's barely cost-effective. The tick, I believe, is 120. But, yep, 120, exactly. And bandits are 65 each. Which means... Oh, no, sorry. Bandits are 80 each. 75. They got slightly cheaper. So, yeah, that was actually worth it. That was very much worth it by cost. And another another solid attack here from Morpheus. Losing one glaive for two bandits is a very solid trade. Especially with five glaives together like this. Sizestrom doesn't have anywhere near the... Ar like, their army isn't as concentrated in the same way... They are, however, expanding quite aggressively, though. Got the southeast, got the center, well, center west, and they've just got expansions everywhere. Orphelia, on the other hand, doesn't quite have anywhere near the level of expansion. This is kind of what I meant by being aggressive versus being more defensive. Sizedrum has expanded everywhere. Orphelius, I mean, they're doing okay right now in terms of military, but that's going to last for maybe a minute. Maybe half a minute, even. Not even. Not even. Half a minute at most. Where are their constructors? They have, a, they have a commander here. They have a, a... Okay, they have conjurers around. They are expanding, but they're expanding cautiously. Building defenders around, making sure that they aren't going to get hit too hard. And the glaive army starting to go down. Getting really heavily damaged. Bandits along the side too. Stopping one of the conjurers, or at least spotting one of the conjurers along the southwest side of the map. While the conjurer over to the south... So oh, wow. Four defenders? That's a little overkill. I mean, it's not necessarily terrible with these many bandits, but Sizestrom's getting a significant economic lead as a result of just being a little bit more confident. Nice tick, though. That was a good tick. 
Good position on that. That'll get rid of most of the bandits. That should actually clear this out a bit. Hopefully Orphelius takes this as confidence to be able to expand right away, but I think they're going to continue with that particular Conjurer's Q. Which means it is still going to be heavily defended. And thus is going to take a little while to build up. So Orphelia is a little bit behind in, in metal. Very much behind in energy. What a size drum. Do they have fusion plants? No, not even from the looks of it. Wind generators, which are working very well. I mean, they have 20 in wind gens and 8 in solar plants. Oh, I see. More wind gens. That's why. There we go. Another 22 in wind gens on the hill. Yeah, that this hill? I'm a little surprised Orphelius is not taking advantage of that hill. It's easy to forget, but it's a great hill. That's a hill you want. You want to build on that hill. Going for the assault here. I think Orphelius might not have been quite as aware that there's this here. And this uphill battle, trying to take this hill in the center is probably going to be suicide. In fact, that may be the hill Orphelius dies on. Size well, definitely the hill that Orphelius' glaives die on. And Orphelius continuing to go heavy on Glaive. Glaive tick, while Sizedrum, they're still on bandits and have added in gunships, adding in banshees. As is Orphelius just now getting a gunship plant, so a minute behind Sizedrum for their own gunships. If they go Trident, they read gunship, but I don't know if they will. All right. Still building up, and Orphelius setting up their own hill. And the eastern hill is kind of Orphelius' hill. They can take that. They can't easily take the western hill. A bunch of Zeus's, warriors and such, and Rocco's, that would have been able to take this hill no problem. But Sidestrom, I don't think they're going to even let that happen. Orphelius, very much concerned about making sure that they don't lose more units to these bandits. I mean, not bad play, not bad control of these glaives, making sure they really swarm down on the bandits, because that's what they have to do. And I don't think they're aware... Okay, they're just now aware of those bandits over below that hill, on the south side of the hill. And the gunship plant, 22 seconds left. Orphelius really needs more energy. They so desperately need energy. And there we go. Now we see the wind gens on the hill. Orphelius going for that. They know that's a thing. Unfortunately, the tick only stunning out one bandit and no follow-up either. Regardless, Orphelius should be able to get rid of these bandits without too many losses. Except possibly the conjurer. Ooh, hey. Well, I would say reclaim, except for the fact that that would be a little redundant. And this is where the defenders, are they going to prove their worth? And the answer is partially. They are going to help. They, however, are not quite enough. Lotuses wouldn't maybe even have been enough. Stardusts would have worked, but that would have been a bit extreme. Lotuses probably would have worked. And the tick coming in here, not stunning out enough to be worth it. But still, Orphelius able to maintain most of these. No, never mind. No, Orphelius throws in the towel, real thinking that this is just, this is it. Losing the expansion. Ah, seeing the Banshees, too. Yeah, those Banshees. That's pretty much it. Actually, Orphelius hadn't even built anything for the gunship plant. Oh, is that what that was? Okay, these commit. The oh, okay, that makes sense. Apparently, these constructors bugged out, so that that southern hill did not actually get built when it should have. That is unfortunate. I kind of wish I knew that because I figured Orphelius versus Sizedrum on Bandit Plains. The Elo ratings are about the same. Bandit Plains is a great map. Oh well, that was that was okay. I mean, I think the last game would have been a better one to end on, but that was okay. That was alright. So, that was... That was unfortunate for Ophelius. I'm sorry about that. A bit weird. Like, really weird. Like, I wonder if there's a bug with the commander or the constructor or something. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Regardless, hope you enjoyed the stream today. That is going to be it for me tonight, so thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.